Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Health is Easy with X Tina. I am X Tina, and today we are making crock pot pork. What are we making? Pulled pork. We're making pulled pork, sorry. <laughs> I just got back from my workout. So this is the real me, no makeup. I'm sorry if I don't look all put together like I usually do, but it is almost 11.30 in the morning and this is gonna cook for about six to eight hours. I'm gonna see what it looks like during the cooking process, but I didn't wanna waste any more time because I wanna have these for dinner tonight. So I was like, I don't care. You guys come to see the recipes. You don't come to see a beauty queen. So I just wanted to let you know, this is why I look like a wet, sweaty, crazy mess. So let's get started because I really wanna get this going. So what I have here is my pork tenderloin. I have, how many pounds? Uh, 1.2 pounds. It's just Brian and I, so that's kind of perfect because if we ever have more than that, it's all we always end up like throwing it away or having to like kind of like force feed it because we have so much. So I think, um, you know, for two people, a little over a pound or even just a pound if you just wanted it for like one night, that would be perfect. I always love having leftovers. So I am just gonna put this in the bottom of my crock pot and we are doing barbecue pulled pork. I think this is a perfect recipe to show on a channel like this, Health is Easy, because I wanna show that like a pulled pork sandwich doesn't, it, that does not equal unhealthy. It doesn't have to be high in calories. Where the calories usually will come from for these like, you know, pulled pork, a lot of like barbecue is the barbecue sauce. You know, there's a lot of sugar in so many of them, brown sugar cane sugar, maple syrup. And so if you can go to the store and find a really great macro friendly, calorie friendly barbecue sauce, you're gonna save so many carbs, so many calories, and you can really get them with little to no sugar. I have this um, Lily's Zero Sugar Carolina barbecue sauce. I got it from Fresh Market. Um, that's what this one looks like. And this is the barbecue sauce that we're gonna be using that's gonna save us a lot of calories. And um, again, you know, I'm still, when I, ha when I put this together for dinner, you guys are gonna see, I'm gonna also make a really calorie friendly coleslaw that I'm gonna put on top. But I'm gonna have a bun, I'm gonna have a sandwich. You can have a sandwich, you can have a hamburger bun. You know, it's, you can find hamburger buns for like 26 grams of carbs, 30 grams of carbs, and that really, is not a big deal that's really nothing and for you to get the like the satisfaction and enjoyment of biting into a pulled pork sandwich like a proper pulled pork sandwich that's gonna stop you from like wanting to overeat later on in the week because when you eat the foods that you truly want and truly crave, that's when all of that overeating, overindulging, and then binging stops because you're just giving your body what you want. So I really wanna show, show you that foods that sound like they might be unhealthy, what's 30 carbs? It's nothing, you wouldn't, that's absolutely gonna do nothing to your body at all. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like, don't worry, but I wanna just show you the things I'm seasoning the pork with. So obviously salt goes first, always, always, always. And I'm gonna salt, I'm gonna do this mixture on both sides. So I have salt, I have onion powder, and I'm not measuring anything, I'm just sprinkling it over just a really nice like thin coating onion powder. I have some garlic powder as well. Same thing, just drizzling it over. And then just for some smoky flavor, because this barbecue sauce, like I said, the one that I have is a little bit more tangy. So for some smoky flavor, I have some smoked paprika here. If I can open it, I just bought it. So it's and I'm just gonna use my hands. And I'm, ooh, it smells so smoky and so good. This is really gonna add a lot of depth with the flavor. Um, if you can try, when you get paprika, try to get smoked paprika. It's gonna make a huge difference. And I'm just gonna pat the seasonings right in. And this is what it looks like so it's nice and coated with a bunch of different of all those seasonings that's what we want so i'm just kind of pressing it in i'm gonna flip and i'm going to repeat i'm just going to wash my hands and we are just going to repeat with the salt 
Don't be scared of salt. If you learn anything from this cooking show, it is to salt your food more. And I promise you're gonna think that your healthy food, the clean food, you're gonna be like, wow, it does taste really good. It's because the salt brings out all that flavor. So we just did onion, now we got the garlic, and then the paprika. I love smoked paprika. I love um, to put it on roasted sweet potatoes. A little bit of garlic, a little smoked paprika. Oh, it's so good. Brian will like ask for it. Will you put paprika on my sweet potatoes? And when he says that, you know it's good because usually men, they don't know the difference but he loves that, it's so good. So I am just kind of, there's a bunch of seasoning on the bottom of the crock pot. So I am just moving the pork along just so it gets the sides. Really just like, look at this pork. It is red with a different color because of all of the seasoning. So once again, I'm just gonna rinse off my hands. Now that the pork is seasoned, we have to add our liquid, which of course is the barbecue sauce. Now I want to save some sauce because once the pork is done, I am then going to drizzle more sauce over it. So it's a true barbecue pulled pork sandwich. And so I am not gonna use all of this. I'm just gonna kind of shake it up a little bit. And I, you can use the back of a spoon, totally works fine. I have a little brush and I'm just gonna brush the sauce over that if I need to, just to like even it out a little bit. And I'm just drizzling, like again, I don't have measurements, I'm just covering it. Your pork might be bigger than mine, it might be smaller than mine, so. This is, this barbecue sauce is a little thick. If you hear all these noises, it's all my animals, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I have the, um, I wish I could like show you better. I have the barbecue sauce over the pork. Hope you can see, I feel like you can. And I'm just gonna take my little brush and I'm just, I'm not like stroking because I don't wanna remove any of the seasoning. So I'm kind of like patting the sauce into the pork just to make sure that it is on every single side. And then I'm just gonna grab a fork so I can flip the pork and make sure both sides are fully coated with this barbecue sauce moving it around so every little piece is fully coated with that barbecue. And this, because it's gonna cook for like, you know, seven to eight hours, I have a smaller size, so like a pound, you know, I, uh, I feel like it might be done before this, the eight hour mark because I don't, don't have a huge hunk of meat here. And I really want to make a point to you guys to not don't rely on like, okay, eight hours. It's gonna cook for eight hours and, and that's the end of that. That is not always true. Yes, like your, your pork will be done in eight hours for sure, but it might, because I have a smaller piece of pork, chances are it's gonna be cooked before the eight hours. And so I don't know what I don't know. So I have to go and check it I, you know, at, at the six hour mark. Maybe I'll open it up, I'll, I'll take the top off, I'll take a fork and kind of lightly just like move it around to see if it shreds. If it's a little tough, if I want it to be more shreddle, shreddable, then I will let it cook again and check it at the seven hour mark and then do the same thing. So this might be cooked at seven hours. It might be cooked at seven and a half. I don't want to overkill it. I don't want to overcook it. I don't want it to be like, I don't want to get those hard crunchy pieces. I want this to be just like beautiful, velvety, perfectly cooked pulled pork. And that was kind of like what I was explaining to you in the buffalo chicken salad recipe, I could have left the chicken cooking for six hours, but when I checked it at like the four and a half mark, it was so buttery, so perfect. And if I had cooked it for that full six, it would have been so over where you would have gotten like stringy chicken. So I want you guys to get used to being more involved in your cooking and not just like throwing a timer on and just assuming that that's gonna make it perfectly cooked. We have to check it, we have to poke it, we have to try to shred it. And um, and then you'll really, you'll you'll get so much more out of your cooking and you'll enjoy your cooking so much more. So I'm gonna show you the pork right now. We have all of the sides coated, but if as you can see, there's not a ton of liquid. So I am just gonna add 
Let's do, I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of water and then we can always add more. If you have chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, you can add that. Um, that might even bump up the flavor. I'm just gonna add the water because the flavoring is all, it, the water's not gonna take away from all the seasoning. We just wanna create more liquid to create that steam so everything cooks evenly. Okay, so I grabbed a third of a cup because that's just what I grabbed on accident. So it's not a big deal. And I'm just creating a little water bed for my little pork guy don't want too much yeah so i still have water in here so i would say i used a quarter of a cup because i once this shreds i kind of want the water to evaporate and i don't want there to be much much water left because when i shred it i want to really have it like all the insides of the pork absorb the remaining barbecue sauce and if it's too watery it's gonna be, you're gonna take away the flavor of the barbecue, of all the seasoning. So I like to slowly add water. And so this is what it looks like. So there's really not too much water here, just about a quarter of a cup. And I am gonna throw the top on. Once again, excuse my very loved crock pot. I use it all the time and eight hours. So I will see you guys. When this is done, I'll let you know how long it cooked for. All right, so it is about to be dinner time and I have a huge tip for you guys. My tip, because I, I don't know, I love to cook, but I also like don't wanna spend hours at a time in the kitchen. So I like to get things ready before it's actually time to eat because when I'm hungry, your girl's hungry and I wanna eat like immediately. And so if I'm, if I'm like hanging out on the couch watching a show or you know, just hanging out, I don't, if I'm, if like hunger hits I'm, and I'm like, oh shit, I have to make this, I have to make that, I have to wait 30 minutes. It just, I, I feel like that's what pushes people to order out or pick poor choices. So I, I mean, it's, it's about six, third it's about to be 6 30 and a little in very soon and like you know dinner time will be shortly but i'm not quite hungry yet for dinner so i'm just gonna make my coleslaw ahead of time and stick it in the fridge so when it's time for dinner the pork is done the coleslaw is done and i'm actually just gonna use veggies that were left over from last night um so i don't even need to cook those which is kind of cool and i love this coleslaw so i'm gonna probably have a little bit on the side so that's my tip for you is get stuff ready kind of beforehand when you're maybe not doing anything earlier on in the day so that when dinner time does come you can just like go 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 so i have this recipe for coleslaw that i love it's actually on my website um i will tag it in the recipe card the full coleslaw recipe that I love. Um, so in true Christina fashion, I am going to have to make this up because for some reason, I just thought I had the ingredients in the fridge for the coleslaw and I'm not missing a ton. I just, I don't have green onion, which is not a big deal. I'm not going to add that. Um, and I don't have the Dijon mustard. I thought I did. And so I don't, I only have yellow mustard. And so I decided, you know what? I have something else that I'm gonna use that I think is a very interesting twist that I've never seen before go into coleslaw. So um, I'm gonna pray that this tastes good and I'm gonna try it. If it doesn't taste good, I will be going to the store for you so I can actually bring you coleslaw that tastes amazing because I do know that my recipe on my website, I've made it before, it tastes incredible. Um, so I'm just gonna wing this and we're gonna pray together, but I think it's gonna be good. Um, so I'm gonna add, I would say about, we'll do a cup, a cup of shredded cabbage. And then I would say, let's do a half a cup of the carrot. This coleslaw has a base of Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, which we have been using this Greek yogurt every episode so far. It's such a great way to add protein and also instead of using sour cream or mayo, all that kind of stuff, the Greek yogurt, oh my God, it, it, it's the same thing for like zero fat, so it's amazing. So I am going to, we're gonna do a quarter of a cup for now. I'm just gonna kind of see the consistency of it because I don't want it to be drenched in the Greek yogurt. So I'm gonna start with about what looks like a quarter of a cup and I'm sure I'm gonna need more. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. 
And the great thing with the coleslaw recipe is that if it is a little bit too moist with the yogurt, I can just add more of the cabbage and add more of the carrot. But this is, I think like, this is actually kind of perfect, this cooking show, because I want you guys to see that like cooking is not that serious. I'm in here, I'm filming a recipe and I want this, I want this cooking show to come off as like, you know, I know what I'm doing, but I'm also just having fun with you in my kitchen and I'm, I'm making my dinner with you. And I just, I, a lot of my clients, a lot of people on social media that talk to me about cooking, about eating healthy, they're so intimidated by it. And it's just like, throw some stuff together, taste it as you go. And if it doesn't taste right, add something, Google. I don't know. I just feel like I just have a lot of fun with my cooking and uh, we're going to wing it here and, and we're going to see how it goes. So right now I actually like the consistency. I added about a half a cup of Greek yogurt and it is pretty, it looks like coleslaw, like it's pretty nice. I really don't like the super wet coleslaw because I also don't um, want it to ruin the taste and the consistency of the, the pork, of the, um, the pulled pork. So this is the part that is super random. But I have no idea if it's going to even taste good. But I have, I have this Bolt House Farms honey mustard yogurt salad dressing, and I saw honey mustard, and I was like, okay. I don't have Dijon mustard, but I have honey mustard, and this tastes really good. And the macros, the calories are really good. It's only two fat and five carb for two tablespoons. And we're not gonna have two tablespoons for like the serving that I put on my slider. So it really doesn't even add much much calories at all. And I just think it would actually give the coleslaw a very unique flavor that, it, that would taste really good with the barbecue. I don't know, don't you think? So this is what I mean by making cooking fun. It doesn't have to be like exact. It can just be like, oh, I think this is going to be good in the recipe. Let me add this. So I am going to add two tablespoons. I'm just eyeballing it because again, it's not that serious to me. You don't have to measure it. You can just eyeball it if you want and taste as you go. Add more if you need to, but um, I'm going to add about two tablespoons and we're just gonna see how this turned out. I might still, in the, my original recipe, I do add apple cider vinegar, so I might still add that just for the tartness, um, but I also am gonna add lemon juice, so I'm not gonna go crazy and just start adding everything. I'm just gonna add and then taste, add and then taste, and then see where I need to adjust the flavor. So right now, I'm actually super happy with the level of like the consistency, um, how like liquidy it is. I'm very weary to say the word moist because I know people really hate that. So I'm gonna grab my lemon and I'm gonna grab salt and pepper. I have a lemon here. I'm just gonna add the juice of the lemon. I'm gonna use the whole lemon. I need that citrusy kick. I need that acidity. It makes all the difference. And while I'm adding this lemon, I checked the pork. And again, I had 1.2 pounds and it was really perfectly um, shreddable with a fork um, when there was an hour and a half left. So it cooked for less than what we thought. I would, you know, I think six and a half to seven hours would be perfect. I would definitely, um, if I were you, if you're gonna make this, I would just check your pork if you have, like obviously if you have like two pounds, let it go and maybe check it at seven hours and see how it's doing. But if you have one that's closer to a pound like me, I would definitely check it at six hours and just see if you can kind of shred it a little bit with a fork because I definitely, it was really perfect. Um, so I just wanna let you guys know, it did not take the full eight hours. I'm gonna have a nice good pinch, nice two pinches of salt. If you think I'm very heavy handed with the salt, um, maybe you just don't use enough. Or maybe I use a little too much. I don't think I use too much because my food tastes super, super good. Um, the salt is really what's going to bring out the flavors. That's how you taste all, you, you bring out the flavors with the salt. So it really makes things just taste so good. Oops. Okay. Now let me just, I'm gonna grab, oh, I have a fork here. Let me just check the flavor. It is a little bit liquidy right now for me, so I might add more cabbage actually. Hmm. The flavor is actually really good. I actually really like it, but I wanna show you. I personally don't want it to be this liquidy. 
it's just a little too much, a little too, a little too loose for my liking. I want it to be more, more uh, cabbage-y. Okay, let's try it. You only know what it tastes like if you try it, so you have to, have to, have to try your food. I kind of really like that. Mm. I actually think it's gonna be really good with the pork. Mm. Hey babe. Hey. Do you like coleslaw? Okay. It's gonna go on our sliders. Oh, oh well, perfect. that's how I was gonna eat it. It'll be perfect. You don't have to lie though. Like you can no, tell the people sometimes. Oh, that's already good. Oh, okay. Well, you need to taste it, babe. I made this up, um, and it's not it's not my normal recipe. Mm. I like the honey mustard. Isn't it good? Mm. I love honey mustard. You like it? Mm. Oh, good. So, do you want it less liquidy? Do you yes. want it more cabbagey? A little. Okay. See, this is. It's really up. I like it this way, but I also don't mind adding a little bit more cabbage. Just a little. Um, it's really up to you guys and what you like. I clearly like it for like you do. Mm. I think I came up with something with this honey mustard dre salad dressing in here. <laughs> See the mistakes? I swear the best inventions are when people mess up. Mmm, I like it. It's so good. Mm. So that is the consistency. And the great thing is like, I like it like this. I wanna taste it. Brian's not a very big condiment person. I am. So if he sees this and he's like, you know, I still want it to be less runny or liquidy, whatever, I will in his own bowl add more cabbage for him. But for me, I, I would not want it. You know, I, I think it's gonna be perfect this way. So I'm gonna put this aside and I just want to show you what the pork looks like. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. So I turn the crock pot off and what I'm gonna do is, you can see just it's it's perfect. It's not stringy, it's not overcooked. So I am just gonna go crazy right now and shred this with my two forks and just move it around in the barbecue sauce that I had it cooking in. Remember at the beginning of the video when I, I told you to only add a little bit of water because I didn't want it to be like, I wanted to mix the pork in with it. If I had too much water, this would be sitting, like now it's perfect, like look at this, it's perfect. If you add too much water, it would be sitting in just a bed of watery barbecue sauce and like that's not good. We want the insides of the pork to sop up all the barbecue. So I am just, just because I want this to really be barbecue pork, I am, I'm gonna do a small little drizzle of the barbecue sauce. We can always add more. And again, I feel like barbecue is also very like subjective to what you like. Um, you might like really sopping wet barbecue, maybe you don't, so totally up to you. And now I am gonna taste this. I'm gonna taste this just to make sure the flavor is right. We, I don't wanna serve this without knowing what it tastes like. So please taste every layer because I might need to add salt. Maybe I'm like, oh, I wanna add garlic or something. Mm, mm. Oh my God. Why do you not have, God. Oh my God, wait. I know it's not dinner time. I know it's not, but listen to me right now. I have to just make sure it tastes good for you. I'm gonna do just a little thing of this. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this because this is my home and I don't care. Oh my God, okay. I wanna see what it tastes like together. That's really good. That is so, so good. I'm gonna make Brian try this in a second. I'm gonna show you my dinner. We're not gonna eat yet because I'm not hungry, hungry yet. I'm not there. But I wanna show you that hamburger buns are not the enemy. You guys, I got this at Target, okay? White, white. You can eat white things. They don't need to be, they don't need to be whole wheat, sprout, like 
you can go for the white burger buns. I think this is just the Target brand market pantry. One big ass bun like this, 120 calories, one gram of fat, 23 carbs, and four protein. 23 carbs for a bun. I was actually, I didn't think that I could find a bun that was gonna be under like 26, 24. So what I was going to do was gonna have this on an English muffin to show you guys that like you don't need a bun, you can have an English muffin. And I think that would still be really awesome because I love English muffins. But to get, I want a soft hot dog, not hot dog, hamburger bun for 23 carbs, Target. Look at, look at the nutrition facts. You don't have to be scared. So that's amazing. I feel like a, this is such a summery dinner, lunch, like backyard barbecue type of thing. Skinny pop is usually the popcorn. Well, they have these new chips. They're popcorn chips. I get these at Fresh Market and I look at the serving size for 22 chips. It's only 110 calories, 19 carbs and three and a half fat. That's absolutely incredible and what i think i'm gonna do i don't want to i'm not gonna have a whole side of chips i'm gonna have a vegetable but i know brian's gonna want to do this too i'm gonna put a couple of my crackers in my sandwich mm -hmm. so wait until we have dinner because you are not gonna want to miss this epic pulled pork sandwich i'm gonna layer pork <laughs> coleslaw and then two or three chips my my pit bull is being terrible so i'm really sorry I know, I hate the sound of dogs barking, so I don't know if it bothers you, but it really gets to me. All right, and now we have some of the coleslaw. And it's supposed to be messy. Let it drip all over. Right, and these chips I have, I didn't buy the chips on purpose to do this. I literally just made it up as I was talking to you. So I have the, um, it's like a cheddar, cheddar and sour cream. Um, we're just, you know, I can't imagine it's not gonna be good. They also have, they do have a barbecue flavor. I think that would be kind of too much, honestly. Um, and they also have a sea salt flavor, which I think would be awesome. And I've had those, the sea salts are really good. Adding some to Brian's. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh, so good. Okay, I am just gonna go right in and be a lady about it. I want the crunch though. <laughs> oh my God. You guys, if you do anything this weekend, make this recipe. It is phenomenal. <laughs> I'm gonna go because clearly there's something going on in my living room. I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna give this to Brian. I love you guys, thank you for putting up with the craziness of the dogs. Tune in next week, but please, before you do, you have to make this. This cannot go unmade. This is too good, too easy. Family's gonna love it. Make dinner ahead of time, it's so easy. I need to see your pictures. Tag me, message me, give me your suggestions. Please like and share this video. I'll see you in the next one. I gotta eat. Bye.